In this video, we find an expression for the root mean square speed according to kinetic theory of gases. In the last couple of videos, we have introduced the concepts behind kinetic theory of gases, and we've been able to derive an expression for the pressure and the kinetic energy uh, for a gas under ambient conditions. Now, uh, uh, those expressions are very useful because they allow us to connect the microscopic and the microscopic world. Right? Pressure is a microscopic phenomenon, uh, but we've been able to relate it to the individual microscopic behavior of uh, uh, gas particles, right? So how fast they move, what is the kinetic energy, and so forth. Right, so we're gonna close this discussion of kinetic theory of gases by, uh, again, trying to figure out what the average uh, speed squared, which is called the root mean squared uh, speed, is for a gas under uh, a normal set of conditions. All right, so uh, if we uh, pay attention to the kinetic energy expression, that we have the right before, we have seen that this expression uh, tells you that the kinetic energy only depends on the temperature and not on the nature of uh, the uh, gas particle that you're uh, interested in. At the same time, we know that from uh, general physics, okay, this should be equal to one half mass of the average of the uh, velocity squared. All right, so then uh, to find an expression for the velocity uh, is actually what we're simply going to have to equate these two and then solve for the velocity, which is going to be straightforward. All right, so 3 halves k sub b t has to be equal to 1 half mass of the particle times the average of the velocity squared. All right, so uh, this 1 half cancels with that 1 half, and we come to an expression that is uh, as follows velocity squared is going to be equal to um, 3 k sub b t over the mass. Now uh, we can take uh, the square root of this and this is exactly what we call uh, the root mean square speed because it's the uh, square root of the average, the mean, of uh, the velocity squared. That's what this VRMS, uh, 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 root mean square, uh, means. All right, so uh, let's see if we can do a couple of calculations uh, to illustrate what these velocities are. Uh, what we actually have here is that that is the mass of one particle, and that is uh, Boltzmann constant. Now, these numbers are actually very awkward to use because they tend to be very, very small. Right, we know that Boltzmann constant is a number that is 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin, a really difficult number to handle. And this is the mass of one particle, but it has to be in SA uh, units, and that's going to be kilograms. Right, so again, this number in kilograms is going to be an also very difficult number to handle. It's going to be on the order of 10 to the minus 27, 10 to the minus 26. Right, so actually, to make our life a little easier, what we're going to do is to multiply this expression above and below by Avogadro's number, uh, to actually find something that is quite useful. Right, be RMS. If we now multiply by Avogadro's number, 3k sub b n sub a t, and we di uh, divide this by mass over n sub a, okay, means that we're changing this expression to the following. k sub b times Avogadro's number, that happens to be the gas constant, 3rt. Okay, and in the denominator, we have the mass of one particle multiplied by the number of particles that you have in one mole that is simply the molar mass. Okay, so that is our uh, easy to use expression to calculate the root mean square speed for a particular gas. Now, uh, something interesting about this expression is that the velocity depends on the temperature and inversely uh, on uh, the mass of the particle. Right, this makes perfect sense. We expect that if there's a, a, a lot of thermal motion, if the temperature is high, there should be more thermal motion, and that means that the particle should move on average faster. So that is sensible. Now, uh, here we have a dependence on the uh, mass, such that if the mass is very high, then the average velocity is going to be lower, okay, which also makes perfect sense. Heavier particles tend to move uh, more sluggishly. Okay? Now, to close up this video, we're actually going to be calculating here uh, uh, the root mean square speed for two gases. It's going to be helium, and then we're going to do this also for oxygen. And the masses with uh, four significant figures here are going to be uh, 4.002 grams per mole. 
and then this is going to be 32.00 grams per mole. Okay, so let's actually then uh, try to calculate uh, one of them, and then we'll uh, talk about the other one, right? So that's going to be the square root. The temperature at which we're going to be we're going to be doing this is going to be uh, 25.00 Celsius, which is ambient temperature. All right, so that is going to be three times uh, the gas constant, 31.4 joules per mole Kelvin multiplied by the temperature, which is going to be, uh, has to be in Kelvin, because R uh, uh, uses you to, forces you to use Kelvin. And then this is going to be, um, the temperature is 298.15 Kelvin. And this we have to divide over the molar mass. Now something that is uh, um, a little bit more telling than before here is that, because we're choosing to use R in the SA system, then the molar mass has to be also in the SI system. And the unit of mass in the SI system is the kilogram, not the gram. Right? So we have to transform this to kilograms per mole. So that is going to be 004002 kilograms of helium per mole. Okay. When you do that, uh, everything cancels out. And for uh, helium, we find that um, that root in the square speed is going to be equal to 1363 meters per second. Okay, And then for oxygen, uh, if we were to repeat this calculation for oxygen, so same temperature, a different mass, we would find that, of course, this velocity has to be lower, okay, because oxygen is more massive. And this velocity uh, is going to be equal to uh, 482 meters per second. All right, so what do we learn here? Uh, we learned something interesting and something expected, right? The heavier gas particle, the heavier, uh, sorry, the lighter atom, helium, moves on average faster, that makes perfect sense. And then the heavier uh, molecule, in this case, moves a little bit more slower, okay? So that makes perfect sense. Now, this has to be, because in the end, the kinetic energy actually does not depend on the mass, right? Uh, uh, doesn't depend on the nature of the particle, only on the temperature. So we now understand what the balance here is. For helium, this mass is actually much smaller than for oxygen, right? But the velocity is much larger. Uh, so those two effects cancel out such the kinetic energy at the same temperature for helium and oxygen uh, is exactly the same. Okay, and again, this is a demonstration for how that works out. The second thing that we learn is that under normal conditions, ambient temperature, this is 300 Kelvin, right? So, or 298.15 Kelvin ambient temperature uh, uh, gases move extremely fast, okay? When you transform that into uh, uh, miles per hour, okay, the, the conversion factor is 2.2 miles per hour for every meter per second. That is in excess of 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, so the oxygen that we actually have in this room and we're breathing in uh, at ambient temperature is actually moving with an average uh, or root mean square speed of well over 1,000 miles per hour, which is extremely fast. Of course, that shouldn't be surprising because um, uh, these gas molecules, right, individual gas molecules, are extremely light, and that means that they can move uh, really fast. Okay, so uh, this video has illustrated how to calculate the room square speed of gases at a particular temperature, and we have derived that expression from uh, the kinetic energy expression from kinetic theory, theory of gases.